maybe you don't know everything yet. Maybe you don't know anything yet. Not a very good impression. So looking back at my CV now, I'm just thinking, you know, what on earth is going through my mind? Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. My name is Julia, I make videos about data science, my life in tech, my career so far, and giving advice for those who also want to have a job in data science. Today, it's a very special video for me. I'm going to be sharing the story of how I got my first data science internship, the whole complicated process, and how a lot of things actually went wrong, but in the end, uh, it was a really, really good experience. Now, if you've been on this channel before, you probably know I now work for Microsoft, and this job started also through an internship that I did for Microsoft, but this is not the story they were telling today. This was my very first internship that I had in university when I was a baby data scientist. So um, yeah, without further ado, I'm going to talk about the opportunity for this internship that I had through the university, the application process, how I prepared for it, what my CV looked like, what the interview structure was like, what were the things that went wrong along the way, and then how I got that internship uh, until you know the contract was signed and I could really start working. So let's see how I got my first data science internship. To start with, I was actually very lucky that this internship was part of my program structure. I did a Bachelor of Data Science and Artificial Intelligence. I have a video going through all the courses in that bachelor and everything that I learned there, which uh, was a really great foundation for the field and the kind of work that I do today. And above all those useful courses, they had this program called Knowledge Engineering at Work, where a lot of, uh, yeah, they say exceptional students could be placed with a company and have a part-time internship for two years of the study. So when you're looking for a university, I also really recommend checking out in advance if they have these sort of programs because they are a really, really big plus for your education and for your experience. It was only after this pre-selection that things started to get real and things started to get pretty difficult. And I think this is also the point from which most of you, depending on the type of program that you have, um, you would also start your process maybe from this point. So a student, who wants to get an internship, there are some companies out there who are offering one and you want to be placed at one of these companies. So how does this look like? So companies come in and they had for us five minutes each to present what is it that they do and what kind of projects do they have to offer for potential interns. We had about 10 or 15 companies, I believe, and they each had five minutes, so it was a lot of information overload. I really recommend uh, you know, taking notes and maybe knowing in advance what it is that you look for in a company. So when you hear everything that they're saying, you're kind of listening for specific things, which makes it a lot easier to you know, either check or cross out that this company is relevant to you. Otherwise, you know, it can be a lot of stuff. But again, that's not a very easy thing to do. If it's your first opportunity, maybe you don't know what it is that you want or you don't know what you're looking for. So just keeping an open mind and trying to you know, give everyone a chance is also a good strategy. So this was the way that we could hear what the companies have to offer. But since again, it's a two-way process, the companies also had to know us. And that happened in a very similar process, uh, what is called speed dating. And uh, that's something that is actually used quite a lot at these career fairs or when students meet companies. And that means that you have these separate tables that either the students move from one to another or the companies move from one to another. But regardless, everyone meets everyone very fast. So to prepare for a speed dating event, you need to know how to sell yourself more or less. So what are some key facts about you, what is it that sets you apart, what is it that you want these companies to remember about you. So if you've done an interesting project that you're very proud of, if you've done an extracurricular activity that you know, maybe is not very technical but you've developed some special skills that you can use like project management or teamwork or you know whatever it is, it doesn't have to be technical, you have to be quite creative with uh, what kind of information you want to put forward as long as it shows you in a good light and it's something that you are passionate about. I think the most important thing you can do is to show passion at these sort of events, to show that you're ambitious, to show that, you know, maybe you don't know everything yet 
maybe you don't know anything yet but as long as you're willing to learn and you're willing to explore new things and you're really passionate about developing skills then um, that's something that can be really helpful and at that point in your career or in your life that might be the only thing that you have right just willingness to learn willingness to start something and to begin your journey and that's totally fine so we did this uh, speed dating thing i talked to all the companies and then at the end of that day uh, you had to choose kind of which companies are interesting to you and the companies would choose what kind of students are they interested in as well so after that process i was set up to have four interviews with my first four choices that liked me enough to to have a conversation with you still have the interview to actually prove that um, you're good for the company or the company is good for you i think that's very important to keep in mind that i don't think i thought about so much in the beginning because i was so desperate to get a job and to prove myself knowing that i hadn't done so much that i kind of thought you know anyone who would take me i would be more than happy to go with it but it's very important in this interview process to also evaluate the companies and see if they have you know a culture that you're happy with if they do the kind of work that you could see yourself you know passionately doing for the whole length of the in internship so you're not just you know excited that you got in and then you realize you're gonna hate your job for the next i don't know six months a year two year however long the internship would take so it's also okay to be picky. The interviews are about to come and uh, this is when you also send them your full CVs and they get to choose um, if they want to hire you or not. And with that in mind, I'm going to show you a snippet of what my CV looked like at the time. I uh, managed to get back into my university email and find my CV and uh, it's quite different than the CV I have now. And that is okay. Uh, like I said, I was in a very different place back then and it's totally fine, but it makes me laugh quite a bit, the amount of random information that I put on my CV. So looking back at my CV now, I'm just thinking, you know, what on earth was going through my mind to think that any tech company would care that I volunteered for a running club or that I helped organize events for my high school. You know, it was all these fun things that, um, yeah, weren't jobs, but it showed that I'm a well-rounded human being and a lot of companies really care about that. I have in here that I was part of a study association, that I was part of a math club in high school and we did a lot of um, you know math problems together and I went to some math contests and I had that I was a children's supervisor for a restaurant. So again nothing in here is technical at all, nothing in here has to do with that with uh, computer science, never mind data science. But um, yeah, it's the CV that got me my first internship, so it still worked out. Now on to the interview. I had four interviews that were set up for me. The first one was with my last choice, actually, well, from the top four, so my fourth choice. Um, it was a company that was maybe a little conservative, maybe a little boring. I think they were related to either insurance or um, statistics of some sort. I don't even really remember. But the interview went well and I actually got an offer from them uh, by the end of the day so I already had a spot any kind of spot for uh, one of the internships now you would think that this would make me a lot more calm and everything would be fine but uh, one thing that you have to know is that I'm a perfectionist and especially back then I was like very ambitious very like driven and I had to do the best that was like in my head, if you don't do everything perfectly, you're a complete failure. So the fact that my fourth company liked me didn't actually make me feel any better at all, which might sound very weird to some people, but I'm sure there's also some people out there who can uh, relate to that kind of, uh, yeah, insane uh, standards that we put on ourselves sometimes. So uh, what happened next is when things get a little bit dramatic and I had actually considered skipping over this part of the story and just showing you guys, you know, everything went well and I got into the company that I wanted, but there were a few obstacles in the way that I think are also what makes, you know, this story more real and also shows you that, you know, not everything goes smoothly from the start. 
it is possible to mess up a lot and that's also fine. So what happened was uh, we had our exam week at the same time as these interviews. So it was already like a pretty stressful time. And uh, they were our first interviews, you know, it was our first time in the real world um, being put up against these companies and these professionals that were basically evaluating us. So what happened is that that really got to me and I got to the point where everything was so overwhelming and there were so many things going on the exams and the interviews and having to, you know, find the perfect internship that would then lead to the perfect job. And if you mess this up, everything would explode and my whole life would go down the drain. And uh, yeah, I was pretty dramatic about it. So I kind of freaked out. And uh, the morning of my top choice interview, I was so scared and so anxious that I just turned off my phone and stayed in my room. And I was like, I can't deal with it today. As you can imagine, that was probably very bad timing to have one of those experiences because everyone always tells you, you know, the first impression is very important. So what do you think happens if you miss going to your first impression? Not a very good impression. <laughs> Although I imagine that not showing up might have been better than me showing up in my super erotic, <laughs> scary phase that I was going through, but nevertheless, I just missed my interview. I didn't show up, the company was waiting for me, the university was waiting for me, and I was just in my room not dealing with the world. Very much a teenager experience. Um, after that, thankfully, I directly scheduled a meeting with my study advisor and I went in, so it was really good that I knew that these resources were available if you're having a hard time it was very helpful for me to go reach out to someone and try to get some advice. So I went in and I told them, okay, I probably, you know, messed this up. I didn't show up for my interview. I feel like, you know, I was so stressed during my exams. I probably failed all of them. So I wouldn't even get into this program. And I was just freaking out all over the place. Um, and my study advisor kind of like calmed me down and, um, you know, told me it was fine that I had, um, oh, and also the university representatives were very, very sweet to me. Thank you, Ellen. Um, they also kind of like tried to calm me down and tell me that it was fine. And the company actually remembered me from the speed round. So that was actually, you know, the first, first contact that we had where we had the chance to, to meet them a little bit. And thankfully I had made a good impression then. So they were willing to understand that, you know, we're all students, we get scared, a lot of things can happen and, uh, they offered me a second chance to go to their office and interview there instead of them coming to the university again. So I was very lucky that uh, there was still a way to kind of fix it, but I still remember that week was just so hectic and so stressful. And um, yeah, I'm happy that it worked out in the end, but not without its hiccups. So then I went to the company building and um, on the road, I well before I went on the road, I got an email that I wouldn't be going alone. There's actually this other person who's also coming with me and we're both interviewing with the company. And I thought, damn, again, uh, they're giving me a second chance, but they're also bringing this other person. So it's probably going to be one of us. So it was a very awkward train ride because I was thinking it's me or this guy, one of us has to get in. Um, and we went there, we interviewed with the manager of the company we each had our turn and uh, that went a lot better you know they already kind of liked me from the start and we just had a conversation again about what are my ambitions what is it that I want to do I don't think he asked me any technical questions they basically said okay all of you guys come from this university you got into the program because you're the top 25 percent you have good grades so I'm sure you're a good student I'm sure you know your stuff uh, basically everyone we're going to interview or everyone we're going to talk to already has that standard so that's fine we're not gonna you're not gonna have to prove that you know your subjects so that was already quite a lot of pressure off you know having this idea that you know you've made it to this point you've gotten good grades you've passed some exams or you've done some certificates you have some diplomas or whatever it is that you have that proves that you know your stuff 
you don't have to prove it every step of the way again so that was very relaxing for me and then i could focus on just like normal conversation talking with this person just seeing that we can communicate um, what kind of projects would i want to work on when i kind of expressed what sort of technologies i was more interested in at the time which was just yeah developing things i was just learning to code so i was very happy to to do some projects with that i really liked data visualization so i wanted to help with the project in that sense i was excited to learn from all the different types of people they had at the company very important to note that i had looked over their website i kind of knew what kind of um, projects or areas that they worked in that they had i knew a bit about the company values um, I knew a bit about, you know, the kind of people that they had there, the kind of companies that they worked with. So very important to do your research before an interview like that, to show them that you, you research them, that you know what kind of company they are, and you're not just walking in, you know, the same way you would for any other interview. You're here for the interview with this company. So I think that helped a lot as well. So at the end of the interview, they said, okay, great. Basically, we want you. If you also like this company, then, um, you can do your internship here. So that was a great thing to hear. Uh, but then I was thinking, oh, does that mean that the other guy didn't get it? And they said, oh no, we actually wanted two people. So we just wanted to talk to you guys one more time, but basically you're both in. <laughs> so that's also a good lesson to not automatically think that everyone's your enemy. And this guy actually ended up being one of my best friends till today. Uh, we still hang out a lot. We did of course the whole internship together and um, we're still friends. So it was really crazy that when I met him, I thought this is gonna be my enemy for life, but um, it didn't end up like way. So don't have a lot of preconceptions about the situations you're in either. So yeah, after that, I went back to the school. I told them that, yeah, the company wanted us and I also really, really liked them, especially for the fact that they gave me a second chance. And that's kind of, you know, the kind of company that you would want to work for if they're so understanding that things happen, people make mistakes, and that they still wanted to give me a chance anyway. Because everyone makes mistakes sometimes, you know, even my job now, you know, sometimes things don't go well. And you need to work with an employer that is okay with that and is, you know, just there to support you and to help you grow. So I think it was a very good test for the company as well. Not that I recommend <laughs> missing an interview to test a company, not a great strategy, but if it does happen and they still want you, they're probably a pretty great place to work. And they actually were. It was a very good experience. I can make another video to talk in uh, great detail about the kind of projects that I did, what I learned from that internship, what was valuable, what was not so valuable, and how that helped me to find my next job. But for now, this was just a dramatic, complicated story of how I got my first internship. Uh, a lot of things, yeah, maybe didn't go so well, but uh, that was still fine and I just wanted you to know as well if you're going through this process that not everything might go perfectly that's still okay it's okay to be scared it's okay to mess up a few steps of the way but just um, yeah I hope the tips that you heard along the video were still helpful and uh, best of luck if you're looking for an internship thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you in the next video like and subscribe uh, for more content from this channel. Bye!